Welcome in our today's uh, lesson and we are going to look at the first chapter of mathematics in the year 8 and our chapter is on algebraic techniques 2 and indices. First we need to look at our prerequisite knowledge about algebra which we covered back in the year seven and we are not going to go through new things these are things that we've gone through and we should be knowing part of them as we develop into algebraic techniques two and indices first we need to remember what we call pronumeral And a pronumeral is simply a letter that represents one or more numbers. When a letter represents one or more numbers, we call it a pronumeral. But if a pronumeral has uh, different values, then it is now called a variable. So when we talk of a variable, it is simply a pronumeral that has got different values. That's why we refer to it as a variable. Now, in algebra, basically, we have seen that a letter can be used to represent one or more numbers, which we are calling a variable. And when this, uh, which we are calling, we are calling them a pronumeral, and when numeral actually represents different values that we refer to it as a variable. We should remember the following. We should remember that A times B is the same as A uh, B. A divided by B is the same as a over B from our prerequisite knowledge, then there is what we call an expression. So what do we mean or what would you understand by an expression? So in most cases, an expression is simply a combination of numbers, pronumerals, and what we call the mathematical operation. The numbers, the pronumerals, and mathematical operations, both of them represent what we are calling an expression. For example, we can have uh, 3x plus 2y. This is a combination of pronumerals, numbers, and mathematical operations. This is an expression. Even that one also is an expression. So an expression is combination of pronumerals, numbers, and mathematical operations. There is what we call a term. A term can only be found on a pronumer on an expression. A term is found on an expression. So when we have an expression, this is simply a combination of terms. And we can look at a few examples of uh, expression and then we identify how many terms makes that expression. For example, let us look at this. We have 9a plus q. 9a on its own is a term. q is also a term. We can have others. We can have uh, 3x over 2. As it is combined, again, 3x over 2 
is also a term. So an, exp an expression is made up of several terms. When we look at a term, basically, let me give an, uh, a longer expression and then we identify various terms that exist. Because terms mostly will be made up of numbers that are of uh, either multiplication, or that's a product, or a quotient of uh, pronumerals. But when you talk of an expression, it's a combination of various terms. That's why you saw uh, 3a plus q, there are two terms there. 3a is a term and q is also a term. What about when you have the quotient? That is maybe a pronumeral over a number or of another pronumeral. So we look at 3x over 5, 9a, 10cd. Now, these are three terms independently. As much as we look at this as 10cd, we have said where it is a term can be formed by a product. A term can be formed by a quotient. And a term can stand on its own the way we have it like that. So these terms are those ones which forms an expression. So we must always know that from an expression we should be able to identify a term. Then uh, we have what we call a coefficient. Now, a coefficient here is the number that is in front of a pronumeral. For example, if I write here 3x, this is a term. A pronumeral is this x. The number that is before a pronumeral is what we call the coefficient. Therefore, the coefficient of, three, the coefficient of x in the term 3x is 3. So we can have an expression and we identify coefficient of various pronumerals. Let us have an expression of various, of an expression, then we identify the terms. Three x plus y minus seven. This is an expression made up of three terms, 3x, y, and then we have a constant 7. When you look at 3x, what is the coefficient of x here? Coefficient of x is 3. Coefficient of y is 1 simply because we cannot have it as a 0 because 0 multiplied by a number is 0. So coefficient of y remains 1. And this one here is a constant. So note that we can also have negative coefficients. For example, if you would have had a number like 2x minus 7x plus 4. The coefficient of x, the coefficient of x here is 2, but the coefficient of y is negative 7 or minus 7 while the constant is 4. Now the last part we are looking at, I'm calling it a constant term, this one here. It doesn't have a pronumeral, neither uh, is it actually a combination of pronumeral and numbers. It's just a constant is a number as it is. So we need to know what are some of the words that we use in algebra. Because you can just use simple word to mean a statement or to mean an expression. So we've said that the term that does not contain 
any variable is called a constant term. Now, take note that of the following that. The sum of A and B can be written in algebra as simple as A plus B. The difference of A and B, this long statement can be simply written as A minus B. Then we have the product of A and B. The product of A and B, what could be the simple statement or expression to mean this? This would be a, B. That is the product of A and B. The quotient the quotient of A and B is simply uh, A over B or if you don't want to say A over B it will be A divided by B. Quotient simply means a division. And if you are asked for a square of a number, then you shall say the square of A is simply the same as A squared. Take note of those wordings. There sometimes we get a come across word problems which requires us to reduce a statement into a simple algebraic expression. So let us look at examples touching on the using language of algebra, creating expressions from the description and so on. So let us look at questions touching on those areas. want to look at using the language of algebra and let us look at the following questions and then we see how to apply the language. We shall look at the, full, the same question here. The expression we have will remain constant and that's why we are going to assist us to answer the questions that will follow. Using the language of algebra, list the individual terms in the expression. 4a plus b minus 12c uh, plus 5. That is the question that we have. Precisely, how many terms are there? Before we even just list them, how many terms are there? You'll notice that here, this is one term, so 4a is a term, b is a term on its own, minus 12c is also another term minus 12c or negative 12, 12c is a term 
and we have the code start tab there that we are calling five. So when you are asked to list the individual tabs, first you have identified there are four tabs. So we have 4A, B, minus 12, C, and we have five. Those are the tabs that exist here. Second question in the expression, the same expression, state the coefficients of A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. A here, we have for A. As we said earlier on, the coefficient of a pronumeral is the number that comes before the pronumeral. So, for A, the number before A is 4. So, this 4 is the coefficient of A. The coefficient of B is 1. Because 1 times B is B. So, coefficient of B is 1. Coefficient of C is minus 12. Why? Because the number that comes before C is minus 12. So coefficient of C is minus 12. Coefficient of D, we don't have D. If we don't have D, then it means that possibly the coefficient of D existed, but it was a 0 because 0 multiplied by a number is 0, which implies that 0 times D is 0. So that's why we shall say that the coefficient of D in this expression is the 0. The last, the second last question. What is the constant term in 4a plus b minus 12c plus 5? We said a constant is simply that term which does not have any combination of a pronumeral or a quotient of a pronumeral. In that particular case, 4a is out, b is out, minus 12c is out. The only constant that remains is 5. So the constant term here is 5. State the coefficient of B in the expression 3A plus 4AB minus 5B squared plus 7B. This question comes in handy because sometimes a student <coughs> State the coefficient of B in the expression 3A minus 4AB minus 5B squared plus 7B. This is very common because in the long run it results into a challenge where sometimes a student thinks where we have 
b as anything before b is a coefficient so i want you to know that this cannot be a coefficient neither we can we have five as a coefficient because this a b is just on its own and this square is on its own the only coefficient of b is where we have numeral b so the coefficient of b in this expression is seven is strictly seven and not five and not four a because four a is not a number it is just another term and when you look at five b is not b the same as b b uh, squared is simply a pronumeral of its own again because of because it is a squared so it's not like term like b so we only look for the term containing strictly b the rest are ignored and k the sum of 3 and k as we saw earlier that the sum of a and b is the same as a plus b so for this particular case it's going to be the sum of 3 and k will be 3 plus k so the word sum simply means a plus sum is plus Second question is asking us to write an expression for the product of m and 7. The product of m and 7. Product here means times or multiplication. So this one will be the same as m times 7, which is equal to 7m. Simply the same. So this one stands for the product of m and 7. A here, CA here tells us 5 is added to 1 half of K. 5 is added to 1 half of K. Add simply here means addition. We want to take 5 being added to 1 half of K. So we first look at what is the 1 half of K. 1 half of K is a half of K which can be written as 1 over 2k or k over 2. So you are saying 5 is added to 1 half of k. So the, the answer will be 1 over 2k plus 5 or k over 2 plus 5. We are adding 5 to 1 half of a k. The sum of A and B being doubled, so what 
find an expression for the sum of a and b when the sum of a and b is doubled. The sum of a and b is doubled. Here, because we say the sum simply means addition, so we are looking at a and b. That is the sum, and this sum is what? Is doubled. The sum is doubled. So you'll say multiply this sum by 2, or you simply say it is twice the sum of a plus b. So we shall either consider it that way, a plus b inside the bracket times 2, or 2 into bracket we have a uh, plus b. So that is it when we are looking at using the language of algebra and creating expressions from a, a description. So we should know that mostly when we look at algebra, it keeps on using alphabets. We should be able to identify at any given time any coefficient of any pronumeral that will come in an expression. We should be able to identify that. So let us now look at substitution. Substitution and equivalence. Substitution and equivalence. From our earlier lessons back in year seven and other algebraic expression questions, you realize that the moment you substitute a pronumeral with a value, the moment you replace a pronumeral with a given value, then we call that substitution or we simply say it is an evaluation. And when you always do that, you'll find that you are just creating an equivalent expression or an equivalent uh, equation. So, for example, if we have 4 plus x, you realize that 4 plus x will be equivalent to x plus 4, irrespective of whatever value will be substituted for x. At any given point, if you choose that x is 0, then it will mean when x is 0 here and x is 0 here, 4 is equal to 4. That is equivalent. When you choose that x is 5, then it will be that 5 plus 4 is 9, and 5, uh, 5 plus 4 the other side is also 9. So this is a situation where we are saying that while you are substituting, you are actually coming up with an equivalent expression. So what do we need to know about this idea of substitution and equivalence? First, to evaluate an expression or simply to substitute values simply means to replace the pronumeral or each pronumeral with a number to obtain a final value.
So we are saying that to substitute values or evaluate expression means to replace each pronumeral in an expression with a number to obtain final value. What are we trying to say here? Let us look at this example and understand. Look at the expression that follows. Given that, or if A is 3 and B is 4, evaluate the expression 7A plus 2B plus 5. Here, we need to be very, very keen about the values that have been assigned to A and the values that have been assigned to B. We've been told A is 3 and B is what? Is 4. So, by substitution simply means replace the values of the pronumerals with the given values. So, this one will mean we substitute where we have A, we shall replace A with the value 3, and then where we have B, we shall replace with 4, and then like that. So, this means... 7 times 3 plus 2 times 4 plus 5. And this one will give us 21 plus 8 plus 5. 21 plus 8 plus 5. When you work out that, you'll find you'll get 34. So we have the final value. We have evaluated this expression by simply substituting the values of the pronumerals, all the values of the pronumerals. Now, we also note that two expressions are equivalent. Two expressions are said to be equivalent if they have what you call equal values regardless of the numbers that they are substituted. Two, that's what you are calling equivalent expressions. Two, uh, here we are looking at two expressions are said to be equivalent when they have equal values regardless of the number that is substituted for each pronumeral. As I said uh, maybe earlier on, we had 4 plus x and uh, let's look at this. And then we have uh, x plus 4. This is equivalent. Regardless of the values you replace here, it will still give us an equivalent expression with the same uh, values. Now, there is what we call commutative law. The commutative law here states the following. It states that if you have A plus B, it's simply the same as B plus A. Nothing wrong about that. Or A times B is the same as B times A. So this is for any values of A and B, 
This is the commutative law. It simply tells us A plus B and B plus A is simply the same. Or A times B and B times A is the same. Is the same. And finally, we need to note what we call the associative law. Now, in the associative law, what exactly is it stating? Look at this. As long as we are adding A plus B plus C, whichever case, even if we bring, we bring in the brackets between B and C or bring in the brackets between A and B, it simply tells, the associative law tells us the values obtained from these results is simply the same. This is what the associative law states for any values of A and B. So, having said this now, let us look at how we shall apply this in various questions and other examples as we observe those points that we have observed above. So we shall start by looking at questions related to substituting the values. So, so by substituting x is equals to 3 and y is equals to 6, evaluate the following expressions 1, 5x, and 2, 5x squared plus 2y plus x. So, what does substitution mean? Substitution simply means carrying that value that has been assigned to a pronumeral and replacing it to the pronumeral. So, for the first part, 5x is the same as 5 multiplied by x, but x is given here as 3, so substitute x with 3, so this will become 5 times 3, which will give us 15, it will give us 15. So 5x is the same as 15 if x is 3. For the second part, 5x squared plus 2y plus x. We need to come again and substitute and see what can we evaluate, what can we get. So this 5x squared is the same as 5 times x squared, then plus 2 times y plus x. You see, 5 times x squared. But in algebra, when we have x squared, it means something x squared means x times x. So this one will be 5 multiplied by x multiplied by x. That one covers this particular part. And then for this other part, it is plus 2 times y plus x. Take the values of x and substitute. Then for the first part, it will be 5. For the first term that we had of 5x squared would be 5 times x squared and x is 3, so times 3 times 3 plus 2 times y, but y is 6, so 2 times 6 plus x and x is 3, so we shall bring in 3 there. 
So here, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. So we have 45 here, plus 12, plus 3. 45 plus 12 plus 3. And you'll get your value as 60. You'll find your final value as 60. This is how we substitute the values of pronumerals in an expression. Now let's look at deciding if expressions are equivalent or are not equivalent. Note that we've said expression can only be said to be equivalent if irrespective of the values of the pronumerals substituted will always remain equal. So let us look at the questions on deciding whether the expressions we have are equivalent or not. So being asked, are x minus 3 and 3 minus x equivalent expressions? That is the question. Before you solve this, remember what equivalence means. Whichever expression you replace here should give us the same value. So we want to, in other words, we want to confirm, is x minus 3 equals to 3 minus x? Take it easy. Let us give any value. Let us give any value and see what she'll get. Supposing, take uh, x be 3. If you take x to be 3, you'll find that this will be 3 minus 3 and 3 minus 3 you will get a, a 0 here and this will also be 3 minus 3 and you will get a 0. So it's telling us that uh, are they equivalent or not? That is one of the values. Let's see before we conclude. Take x b uh, Let's take symbol. Let's take uh, a one. If they are equivalent, should also still agree here. Now here it will be. We take x to be one. This one will be one minus three. Is it the same as three minus one? Watch out. One minus three is minus two, and three minus one is what? Is two. Is minus two and two the same? So the answer here is not equivalent. And the reason is because they are not equivalent because when you substitute the values, if the two expressions are the same, irrespective of whichever values you substitute, not only one should give us the same, they should keep on giving us equal answers. So this one has already shown us that they are not the same. So we have concluded to say that x minus 3 and 3 minus x are not equivalent expressions.
R A plus B and B plus 2A minus A equivalent expressions. Let's see. Look at that. A plus B. Let us take one assigned values. Let us, uh, uh, by, let us take uh, A, assign a value A, B, 1, and B, B, 2. Let us assign those values. On the left hand side, on the first part, this will be in A is 1 plus B is 2. This will get 3. On the other side, B is 2 plus 2A two is 2 times 1, 2 times 1, and then minus A, which is 1. This one will give us 2 plus 2 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is equals to 3. So this is 3, that is 3. They are showing that they can be equivalent. But that is not the final conclusion. We need also to try again a different value for A and B. So let us give A a 3 and B maybe a 2. Or let us give it a bigger, even a different value, because we had used 2 initially. Let us give it a 5. This side we have A plus B, and A is 3 plus B is 5. This gives us 8. Move the other side, we have B is 5 plus 2A, that is 2 times 3. B, 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 B is not 3. Oh yeah, B is 3 here. And then minus A, A is 3. Just a minute. B, B is, let me write it here, this is B plus 2A minus A. B is 5, so 5 plus 2A, that is 2 times 3, and then minus A, and A is 3, so minus 3. This one gives us 5 plus, this will give us 6, and then minus 3. This will give us 11 minus 3 is equal to 8. So this is 8, this is 8. In our conclusion, we shall say that the two expressions are equivalent. The two expressions are equivalent. Now, in, so in our work, sometimes we don't only deal with those algebraic expressions which only are uh, continuous, but we also look at others which also have uh, questions or those algebraic fractions. So let us look at how we can handle those algebraic expressions which have got denominators and numerators. Substitute A is 4, B is, uh, B is minus 3 in 12 over A plus 6 over B. That is what we have. So we shall move ahead and start our substitution. This will be 12 over A and A is 4 plus B, B is plus 6 over B and B is minus 3. 
Earlier on, we saw that when dealing with fractions, we can simply simplify fractions by looking at the common between the numerator and the denominator. What is the common factor? And then we simplify. So between 12 and 4, 4 is common. So by 4 here gives us 1, by 4 here gives us 3. So here we shall remain with 3 plus. Now what we have there is 6 over negative 3. We said when dividing, quotient of positive and negative, the result is negative. Multi product of negative and positive, the result is negative. So when multiplying unlike signs, it is negative. When dividing signs that are opposite, we get a negative. But when they are the same, they will be a positive. The situation here, 6 is positive, 3 is negative. So I expect you to find that the results will be negative. So to simplify here, you expect this is the common factor here is by 3, minus 1 by 3 is 2, 2 divided by minus 1 is minus 2, minus 2. So you find that is what you get, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So in other words, what we have here is 12 over A plus 6 over B is the same as 12 over 4, which is 3, plus 6 over minus 3, which is simply minus 2. 3 minus 2, you get, is 1. That is substitution, given that we had uh, the fraction. We have given the same what is the value or evaluate 100 over A plus B. This one will be 100 over A plus B. A is 4 plus B is minus 3. This one will give us the numerator remains 100 and the denominator is we have positive and negative. This one will give us negative. So it is 4 minus 3 are the denominators, they are denominator. This one becomes 100 over 1, which is equal to 100. The fraction knowledge must always be observed. The issue of denominators, the lowest least common multiple or uh, LCM, should always be observed as we work on this. You, know, you substitute and then you work out the way you always work on ordinary fractions. And finally, we want to combine, and then uh, we look at if this, that is AB over 3 plus 2, plus, sorry, plus B. Now, this is a product of pronumerals, and then we have, uh, we are adding another pronumeral. So, given that A is 4, B is minus 3, we should remember and substitute accordingly. This is the same as A, A is 4, multiplied by B, B is minus 3, right, over 3 down here, then plus B. Take note that the denominator here of 3 is only for A and B, so do not bring it all the way to B. And B, we have said, is minus 3. There is a tendency that some will to be tempted to simplify here. It's not advisable. So here, 4 times minus 3 will give us a minus 12 over 3. And then this is the opposite side, so it will give us minus as a result. So when you get that, here there is a common factor which is 3. By 3 here is 1, by 3 here is minus 4. So we remain with minus 4, minus 3 over 1. What you have here is minus 4, minus 3 over 1. Minus 4, minus 3, you'll find that what you get is simply minus, minus, so this is minus what? 7 over 1, which is simply minus 7.
that is what we get minus 7. Now, it is very common when we are looking at expression, it's very, very common that sometimes we are able to fill a table using the expression that we have and fill in given that the values keep on changing. Remember we've said in substitution, we assign values and those values are assigned for certain for pronumerals. At whatever level, at whatever, the whatever value you are given for a pronumeral, we should be able to substitute it and give the, the correct evaluation for each. So let us look at the following as our final uh, example. That is copy and complete this table. So we have a table here. Values for A are supposed to be there, and these are the values for B. So we definitely you realize that A is 5 here, and B here is simply 2. So when you are asked for A plus B, you'll just add A plus B, which is 2, is 5 plus 2, you get a 7 here. A plus 2B. A is 5, 2B is 2 times 2, which is 4. So 5 plus 4, 5 plus 4 will give us a 9. This is A minus B. A is 5, B is 2. So 5 minus 2, you will get a 3. A minus 2B, B is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So 5 minus 4 is 1. That's how to fill that table. The second part, we've been given A as 8. We have not been given B, but we have been given what? A plus B. So if A plus B is 10 and A is 8, then it means that A minus, uh, sorry, A plus B if it is 10, then it means that if we add A plus dash should give us 10, so 10 minus 8 should give us a B, which is a what? A 2. Let's confirm. Is it correct that A plus B is 10? That is 8 plus 2 is 10. That's true. For this other part, we are adding A, which is 8. A, which is 8 plus B, which is 2. So, sorry, plus 2B, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. So, 8 plus 4 is 12. Here we have A minus B, that is 8 minus 2, which is a... 6. A minus 2B, that is 8 minus 4, which will give us 4. And when you look at this one here, we have been given B as simply 1. And then we have been given down here A minus B as 1. What are they trying to tell us here? And how did be so keen on this point? A is not there. We are missing A here. We are missing this one here. We are missing this. We are missing this. But when we find that B is 1, but A minus B is equals to 1. If B is 1 and A minus B is 1, then it means that when you add 1 plus B should give us A, which is 1 plus B should give us a 2. So let's confirm. Is it true that here, 2 minus 1, is it equals 1? Correct. Then, can you find out now this? A plus B, this one will give us 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then we have A plus 2B. A plus 2B will be A is, for this case, is 2 plus, 2B is 2 times 1 will give us 2 times 2 plus 2, which is a 4. So this part will give us a 4. And the last part, we have A, and we have seen, seen A is 2. 2 minus 2, this one will give us a, a 0. Why? Because 2 times 1 is 2, and A is 2, so 2 minus 2 is a 0. When we move here, we don't have A. And we don't have a B. We don't have A and we don't have a B. But we have a situation here where we have A 
plus 2b will give us 17. Now, this one, this one will require extra knowledge and you'll look at it about substitution and making a subject and find out what we have. So I'm going to write the two. A plus B. A plus B is 10. Right? And then we have A plus 2B is 17. Now those are two equations and these two equations can be simply handled in a very simple way. Why I say that? Just make one of the one of it the subject and then we shall substitute it in the other level. Make, make one of it the subject. For example, if we choose to make A the subject here, then from A plus B is equals to 10, we shall simply subtract B here and subtract B here. So what you'll find that you remain with the A is equals to 10 minus B. So when you have this, where in the second, that's from the equation, and from the, so the second equation, where I have A, I'll write there 10 minus B. And then I collect the like terms. So this is, this is from equation 1, this is equation 2. So what am I trying to say here? The value of A is equivalent to 10 minus B. So that means that instead of writing A, if I have A, uh, plus 2b is equal to 17, I'll write, instead of writing a, I'll write 10 minus b, okay, and then plus 2b is equal to 17. So when you look at this one here, it is 10 minus b plus 2b is equal to 17. So you can reduce it to an ordinary expression, this one will become 10 plus b is equal to 17. This is an ordinary expression of which we shall subtract both sides 10. So here minus 10, uh, you'll get B. And here minus 10, you'll get 7. When you subtract 10, you get 7. So if that is the case, we have B as 7. We come and fill our 7 here. B is 7. And if B is 7 and we would say that in terms of B, if B is 7, then what is our A? So 10 minus 3, we'll find that A is 3. This one was telling us 2B. Is it true that 2A plus 2B equal to 17? 2B is 2 times 7, which is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17. That's correct. A plus B is simply 3 plus 7, which is 10. That's correct. So we move ahead and look at the other part down here. We have A minus B. A is 3, B is 7. So 3 minus 7, you'll find it is a minus, minus 4. 3 minus 7, you'll get minus 4. And finally, 3 minus uh, 2 b which is 14 so we are talking of 3 minus 14 with this one will give us minus 11. so the best way to fill that is that simple you only need to know what values are where and you do the substitution as you have checked and you always fill for the last for the second last part here the other one you can finish at your own time this is a is 20 and a plus 2b is a 0. That's very interesting. If I may illustrate that, we are saying a is 20, but a plus 2b is a 0. So we can substitute a is, sorry, a is minus 20, not 20. a is negative 20. But we say that a plus 2b is equals to zero. So substitute. By substitution, where we have A, we shall write there negative 20. So this will be negative 20 
plus 2b is equals to 0. So to use, to solve it systematically, we add 20 here and add 20 here. If you are going to add 20 this side and 20 this side, you'll find that this will remain 2b is equals to 20. Then we shall simply divide by 2 to get b and then divide by 2 to get 10. So you find that b is 10. So I can look where we have b. b here is 10. Then here a plus b is minus 20 plus b. It will give us minus 10. This part a minus b. a minus b. a is minus 20. Minus 20 minus b which is minus 10 you will get minus 30. And finally 2b minus 2b and 2b is what? Minus 2b and 2b is 10. So we are talking of minus 20 minus 20. We shall have minus 40. So that is how we work out taking the values and substituting them accordingly. And you can be able to fill as many tables as possible. You can handle this part and to see how you go about it. That is it for today. And I hope you'll be able to use uh, substitution uh, to evaluate expressions. Thank you.